It is a beautiful day to be a carnivore and as with all of my carnivore day of eatings, I am going to get my grill started and warmed up while we prepare the food inside. So, all right, I've shown you guys my gas grill several times. The first thing I do is I turn the burners off. I turn the gas on. This is so the gas builds up pressure in the line so it starts easier. Now, I cook with a wood fire. So, what I did here was I put the old racks on top of the burners. I took the grease plates off. And what I do is I rest kindling and wood on top of the burners. And you don't need to have the extra racks on top of the burners. It helps a little bit. Uh, you can do this with wood. Uh, not too many ashes build up, but if you do this with charcoal, be prepared to clean this grill out very frequently. So we have our wooden, I turn the gas on, and I hit the igniter, the grill starts, okay, fire's on. We should have a nice flame in about three minutes, depends on how seasoned and dry the wood is. Today, the only thing we're cooking is some beef belly, and we'll cut this up in a second, but I just wanted to show you guys the recent supplements that I've been taking and why. So I've been using vitamin D3 every day because I haven't been able to get as much sun as, you know, it's getting closer to spring, the UV index is going back up. So I won't have to supplement vitamin D3 moving further. Well, depending on how much time I get in the sun. And I've been using the magnesium spray again. Magnesium is very important for absorbing vitamin D3 and soil right now is fairly depleted in magnesium. So I'm testing this out. Uh, I haven't really noticed any benefits from it, but the vitamin D3 is a definite, guys. Now, I do this transdermally, and the reason is because they use hexane, a solvent, to extract the vitamin D3 from sheep wool. So, it's definitely not safe to be consuming this orally on a consistent basis from what I understand. And your skin does have vitamin D3 receptors, so it does absorb transdermally. Uh, I usually shoot for around 10 to 15,000 IU per day. So, I'll do about five to six drops initially, and then later on in the day, I'll put some more vitamin D3 on. The magnesium is different. The absorption rate of the magnesium is fairly low. So I do quite a few sprays of the magnesium, and I try not to get it on my hands. It makes your hands very dry. It can also make your skin fairly dry. So try not to put too much of it on one specific spot. It can also make your skin burn a little bit. Uh, and I put it on pretty much everywhere. You know, I do, I do my legs too. Just a nice even coating everywhere to make sure uh, I get some magnesium absorption. If you guys are curious what these products are, they are on my Amazon shop. That's linked down in the comments below. The only thing I have to say about this magnesium spray is don't get it on your private parts. Don't get it on your face. Try to keep it away from your hands as well. Here I have some iodine and I usually do this transdermally as well. Now, normally iodine would only be about two to three drops oral, but the transdermal absorption is about 10%. So I usually rub about 20 drops of iodine on. And I'll do this once or twice a day too. The only reason I don't like doing this and the reason I do take it orally sometimes is because uh, this stains my hands, so I, you know, I, I go walking around with orange hands most of the day. So that's all the supplementation I currently do. Yes, I could get some more sun for vitamin D3. I could probably source some wild plant foods for magnesium, and I can eat more seafood for iodine. But for me, the transdermal absorption is working right now, and I find it to be much easier. So just a closer look at these guys. It's a Sutra Spray Pain Away Magnesium Oil Spray. Uh, now, extra strength liquid vitamin D3, 1000 IU per drop, and J. Crow's Lugal Solution 2%, which is 4% iodine. Now, this is a beef belly, you know, what they would normally make bacon into if it was pork. And the reason I like this cut so much is because it's super fatty, I don't have to add fat to it, and it's cheap. So, all I really do is cut this into strips. As you can see, there's a lot of marbling in this. There won't really be a need for extra fat. And yeah, this is a tougher cut, so. If you cut it small, though, 
against the grain, it, you could still eat it if it's rare. All right, let's go outside and see if the grill's ready. All right, flame is nice and hot. Let's get started. Since the meat I usually cook is so fatty, I have to be careful with the flare-ups on the grill. And this usually leads me to just getting a sear on the outside and then finishing it in the oven. The nice thing about having really fatty meat is it caramelizes easily and it flares up the heat on the grill so it doesn't take as long to heat the grill up either. And this might look like a lot of meat guys but this is two days worth. I find it a lot easier to only have to prep every other day. It saves me a lot of time. Uh, you know, not having to cut up some raw meat, fire up the grill. You know, being able to do it every other day is definitely uh, more enjoyable. And all, all I really want here, guys, is some color on the outside. And then I'm probably going to let it sit at room temperature for like 10 to 20 minutes, just so it's not still cold on the inside from the fridge. All right, the fire's getting a little crazy, so I'm gonna kill the heat. And since we have wood in here, it's still ignited, so. Like, like this is a little darker than I usually want it, but this is this is a bit closer to what I usually go for. Usually nice dark brown. All right, so we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you guys what else I have to eat. So this is the beef belly I just grilled. I have some leftover chuck roll from yesterday. I'm gonna slice this up and then when the beef belly cools off, I'll slice it up as well. You can see the color on the meat here is a lot darker red. That's because I actually overcooked this a little bit yesterday. This is more of a medium-ish cooking time. The purple color is usually what I go for. That means it's raw in the middle. This, although it's a bit overcooked, I don't want to waste the meat, so I'll have it today. And as we can see, the fat distribution on the chuck roll is pretty good. Decent amount of fat. The belly is slightly fattier, but this varies from animal to animal. Usually, chuck roll and beef belly are both excellent cuts if you're trying to not have to add extra fat to your diet. Seeing as Frankie Boy is the original nose to tail overlord of the carnivore diet, it wouldn't be a day of eating video without me eating some raw or stanky ass meat. And if you guys are relatively familiar with my day of eating videos, I commonly say that indigenous groups ate a variety of raw, cooked, and fermented animal foods. And I'm a big believer in replicating this for certain nutritional reasons. Uh, foods have different properties when they are raw and also different properties when they're fermented. Uh, you guys can check out a bunch of other videos. The basic is raw foods generally have higher antioxidant properties, vitamin C and vitamin E, and fermented foods have a higher vitamin K2 and beneficial bacteria. So, uh, we have three things here today. We have, of course, the lamb head. And I only usually have the brain. Uh, my butcher split this down the middle with a bandsaw. If you look at some of my old school videos uh, from like two years ago, I used to crack them open with a cleaver, but uh, this is a lot easier. And they don't split these completely, so I need a little bit of elbow grease to, uh, to crack the skull open, just like rip it apart. And once we rip it open, we have the most prized part of the animal, which is the brain. The reason the brain is the most prized part of the animal is because it is the only real source of EPA and DHA in a land animal. And it's also an excellent source of just caloric nutrition in general. It's high in saturated fat. It's very concentrated in calories. And it also has a high vitamin C and vitamin E content. Uh, I mean, of course, you also have the eyeballs of the animal. These are a bit hard to get out when it's raw. Uh, usually what I do with this is uh, I take some Italian seasoning, roast it low and slow in the oven, and then I sneak it into my sister's lunch. <laughs> So the EPA and DHA required in our diet isn't incredibly high. Uh, we could safely say that this amount of brain, uh, you know, it's not really that much, maybe I would say 75 to 100 grams, uh, is the equivalent of about 20 pounds of muscle meat. So I would say having a brain like this 
once every week or two is plenty of EPA and DHA. Now, of course, fish is a more approachable alternative. Some of you guys may have seen me speak about salmon roe in the past, and salmon roe is gaining in popularity. Frankie's Free Range Meat, my new meat company, will be offering both within several days, guys. So if you want to pre-order some veal or lamb brain, as well as some salmon roe, aka caviar, check out my website, frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Keep an eye out for that. I am very excited to say the least. What I am not excited about is these two jars. Well, more, more this jar I'm not excited about. This jar is just pureed beef liver. It's been sitting in this jar for about three weeks now. It's not too fermented and, and it's fairly tolerable. This is one hell of a mix. And if anyone on YouTube is eating nose to tail, it's Frankie Boy. This is a blend of pork brain. I have some adrenal glands in here from cattle. I have some thyroid glands. And I also have the thymus gland, the pancreas. And this has been sitting in the jar for three weeks. But the difference between these two jars, despite them both fermenting for three weeks, is this jar is fat-based. Liver is protein-based. It doesn't have a high fat content. Fat ferments much differently. It gets very, I would say, I mean, rancid is a good word to describe it, but it's not technically rancid. So this is very putrid, to say the least. Oh, man. I actually, the two times I went to open this in the fridge, it exploded. Uh, what, what are those, The can, like a Pillsbury dough can, you know, like the, you pop it open and it pops open, just like those fat girls in the summer with the, uh, the, the crop top shirts, you know, like pops open, but it like popped open and it made a mess everywhere. So, uh, that being said, Frank, why do you have a bunch of brains and glands sitting in a jar? Well, the adrenal gland, the thyroid gland, uh, these thymus gland, these glands in the animals have certain nutrients in them. You know, the thyroid gland in a cow might be high in iodine, all the glands are high in vitamin C, and you know, I had to buy a pound of each of them and I can't eat that much glands at once. Um, oh, this is actually a little, a little frozen. My fridge was really cold. And the pork brain, of course, is in here for DHA. I'm just gonna have, um, I usually have a couple teaspoons of this. Uh, I'm gonna have one teaspoon of this today only because it's super cold and because I have some other brain that I can eat. Oh God. That, that's up there with some nasty stuff I've eaten. It, it, this actually might be one of the most consistently nasty things that I've been eating, but it's all for nutrition. So this is the lamb brain. Uh, we're obviously EPA, DHA, vitamin C, vitamin E. You could eat eggs too. You don't have to be eating raw lamb brains. Very mild in flavor, has that cholesterol texture. Usually, I prefer to pan sear it, but um, sometimes it does oxidize the cholesterol, so time to time, I do eat it raw. You guys haven't seen me eat liver in a little while, but this is what I've been doing lately. Uh, I always get asked, Frank, how much liver should I eat? Uh, I don't like giving out specific numbers because that kind of reveals my, uh, my, my future nutrition guidelines, but basically, half a pound of liver per week is good. What I usually do is I have about a teaspoon per day. That's usually what I go for. Sometimes two teaspoons. And beef liver can be high in copper. So make sure you're consuming very fresh meat, lightly cooked meat, uh, because vitamin C binds to copper. Now. If you are concerned about copper and you've been eating a lot of liver, what you could do is, this is some ascorbic acid vitamin C powder and you can put that in some water. I usually put about a quarter to, yeah, about a quarter teaspoon in some water and then I'll just have that with the liver. What vitamin C does in the bloodstream and in the stomach is 
it chelates copper. It literally binds to copper and takes it out of the body. And for those of you who don't know, I ate like a pound of duck liver a day for two months and I might have a bit of excess copper. So that's what I've been doing to alleviate the copper. But th this takes literally years and years and years of eating way too much liver. Uh, a half a pound of liver per week is perfectly safe. And even initially, you might want to increase your liver intake, especially if you haven't been eating liver your whole life. You need to replenish nutrients that you're deficient in. And the best way to do that is to kind of front load your body. So initially, when you start a carnivore diet, you know, you can eat, you know, two to three pounds of liver a week for two to three weeks, but then, you know, taper back, use a more moderate amount. Uh, so now that we've eaten all our disgusting stuff for the day, let's actually enjoy our meal. Keep in mind, guys, you can make an omelet with pasture-raised eggs and raw cheese in the morning and get the same nutrients I'm getting now. This is just a little bit of an extreme version. Uh, I'll show you guys some more approachable stuff in the future. So far in the day, we've already achieved every single nutrient our body needs. We got the vitamin D3, the magnesium, the iodine through transdermal supplements. Uh, we consumed all of those organ meats and the fermented food for vitamin A, B12, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K2, omega-3 fatty acids. All of those nutrients are already accounted for. And honestly, I'm not really that hungry, but Frankie Boy has got to maintain the stonemason appearance. So uh, we're going to eat some meat. Uh, you guys saw I have the leftover chuck roll here and some beef belly. Uh, I'm honestly not too sure if I'm going to even eat the chuck roll. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, cook some beef belly for you guys just to show you uh, how I cook my food again. But maybe I'll throw this in the oven. Let's see. So I usually just take, this is um, Redmond's Real Salt. Uh, my favorite salt lately. If you guys want to check out my salts or my cooking utensils, uh, they're on my Amazon shop as well. Uh, I just sprinkle a little bit of this salt. And the reason I like the Redmond salt is because it's very potent. You put just a very tiny amount on it and that's plenty even when only eating beef it's just so interesting how every single part of the animal tastes completely different the fat on the chalk roll tastes different than the trim fat that tastes different than the fat on the belly all the muscle parts taste different this diet never really gets old even eating only beef it, it's really interesting uh, since we are consuming high quality grass-fed meat and I mean what you're missing by eating grain-fed meat is a fairly significant nutrient difference in ideal circumstances. All of the vitamins, the fat-soluble vitamins in grass-fed meat can be up to 10 times higher. Uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, B vitamins only slightly higher, vitamin C definitely higher, omega fatty acids substantially higher. So if you're consuming a pound, two pound, three pounds of meat a day, uh, it really adds up and seeing as vitamins are stored in the fat, you know, the grass fed fat is one of the most important things to be consuming. This chuck roll and beef belly is an example of what I'm going to be bringing you guys in my fatty beef box. Uh, right now it's on the website frankiesfreerangemeat.com and the prices right now guys are great. We might even be able to squeeze it a little bit cheaper so be sure to check that out. This room temperature chuck roast the next day is giving me like roast beef vibes. I really like it. You guys know like, like you go to a deli, you buy like a roast beef sandwich with butter. All right, so I can't even finish that chuck roll. That is funny for me. Uh, that's honestly all I'm gonna eat today, guys. So what I do now is I'll take the plate of beef belly, I'll put it on my cutting board and I'll leave this here for the next day. Uh, you could put this in the fridge if you'd like to. I've personally don't, I mean, I don't recommend leaving it out, but this is just what I do. I'll leave the knife out, the fork out, the salt out, just so I don't have to do it again tomorrow. Saves cleaning, saves time. But we have one more thing to do today, boys and girls. Now, we just ate a bunch of high fat soluble vitamin animal foods, and all the fat soluble vitamins work together synergistically, including vitamin D3, which we didn't really obtain from the meal. And although we took some, I like taking some more right after my meal. And for some of you boys thinking, oh Frank, stop lifting your shirt up, you fairy gay boy. Maybe just skip through the video for like five or 10 seconds, all right? So, 
Again, five or six drops. And I do look a little thicker and chubbier uh, after my meal. Uh, I will say that uh, that is part of the reason that I have a nicer butt than your girlfriend, but we'll, we'll leave that for another video. I find that, uh, you know, my outside, joking aside, you know, my face looks healthier. I look better overall, more vibrant when I increase my caloric consumption. Uh, I can maintain a lower body weight comfortably, but having that extra fat stores in certain parts uh, just makes you look healthier, especially your face. That's all for today, guys. Hopefully some of the things I've showed you will help you optimize the nutrient density, the vitamin and mineral content in your diet, ultimately leading to you improving your physical health and well-being. Uh, the Amazon shop will be down in the comments below, guys. Uh, that's for the supplements and the salt if you want to try those. And as I've said, frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Uh, we recently launched Frankie's Free Range Meat. Our goal is to provide nutrient-dense animal products to everyone. And we are offering some fatty cuts of grass-fed beef now. We're offering some steak cuts, some fat packages, uh, non-perishable foods like pemmican and jerky. We did just add some lamb today as well as some additional add-ons. Uh, caviar, salt, organ meats. Definitely check out the website, guys, frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Uh, check out our mission, and if you do want to support the future of me providing you guys with high-quality, nutrient-dense animal foods, you can take a look. But outside of that, you guys enjoy the rest of your week.